Hello and welcome to this fantastic Christmas carol which we're going to learn today on the DG Melodeon. It's Silent Night, the old classic from the early 1800s. This tune is in G major, it's a waltz, so we're going to be counting one, two, three, one, two, three. Our left hand pattern is going to be um, pa, pa, once in each bar, the um being the bass note and the pa being the bass chord. So you'll have your classic pattern. So bar number one, we have a dotted crotchet, quaver crotchet, and you count that one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Now you can hear, I'm saying the two quietly because that's where the dot is. So dotted crotchet, what is that? Well, it's worth one and a half beats. We can't count one and a half, obviously that's impossible. So you count one, two, and where the two comes in, that's where the dot is, and the quaver that follows that is on the and after the two. So you've got one, two, and three. So that gives you one, two, and three. One, two, and three. I've put a dagger symbol underneath that E note because you can play it with the bellows, you don't need to repress the button. Uh, so it's finger two, right hand is used throughout this bar. And the timing, like I say, one, two, and three. So the final note, uh, when you return to the D, that's on beat three. Now you've got to slot that right hand pattern around the left hand. The left hand, you remember, is going. So what you're doing is this. Now, the um, the, the bass note, if you like, coincides with the first right hand note. And then you've got the pa on beat two while that uh, first D note is still ringing. And then when you play the E and you do the pull of the bellows, you momentarily lose your bass, like that. Just a little pull out, play the E note, and then push in again, play the bass, chord, and that D right hand at the same time. A lot of being good at the melodeon is about being able to slot the two hands together. See? One, two, and three. So that's your first bar completed. Now, the second bar is only one note in it, so it's a dotted minim, right? A minim is worth two. The dot adds on the half as much again, so half of two is one, two plus one is three. So it's the only note in the bar, so it comes in on beat one and lasts for all three beats of the bar. And it's, it's a B note. It's the button directly above the one we just played. And so that will give you And that's on the push, and while you're doing that push, you simply carry on doing the um pa pa with the G chord. Let's play those two bars together. I'm going to count you in. One, two, three. Okay, that's the first two bars complete. Good news now, because the next two bars are exactly the same. So on stave two, bars three and four are the same as bars one and two. Now, to start this, I would recommend bring the bellows out quite a bit because most of that is on the push. Okay, so that's four bars complete. That's your silent night, holy night part done. I have to say, this is not a particularly good key to sing it in. Um, I generally uh, sing this in either A or B flat but uh, it's a good key to play in, so it's a nice sort of instrumental version if you like. If you happen to have a G C melodeon, um, this is a D G, uh, you would be playing it in the key of C if you use the same uh, fingering. Um, key of C is probably a little bit high, but it's a better key than the key of G, which is probably too low. Anyway, not to worry, we'll, we'll forge your head. Don't forget that my melodeon is a fourth button start, meaning my fourth button down on the G row is G. It might be the third button down on your melodeon if yours is a third button start. Okay, so just have a listen. Play your third button now. If it sounds like this, 
you've got a third button start. If it sounds like this, you've got a fourth button start, same as me. Let's move on to bar number five. And we said that the first two bars were predominantly on the push. This is predominantly on the pull. In fact, those next two bars are all pull, aren't they? Let's look at the right hand first of all. We have A, A, F sharp. Now, a is on the ledger line directly above the stave. If you're not sure what the ledger line is, it's a little extension on the stave. The stave has five lines and the ledger line is a little extra line uh, on top to house that note, which is an A, little finger, finger four. It's a minimum held for two beats and then a crotchet held for one beat. So if you like, it's one, two, three. So the first A is on beat one, lasts for beats one and two. The second A comes in on beat three. One, two, three. And still pulling in the next bar, next button up, third finger, the note is F sharp. It's a dotted minimum. Uh, so we've dealt with one of those before. So it's played on the first beat and held for three. So this is all is calm, all on the pull. The left hand, the accompaniment, if you like, is a D chord. And it's the same two buttons we've been using. But instead of pushing in, we're pulling out. So we've got the bass note and then two chords, bass note and two chords. So it's D bass, D chord, D chord, D bass, D chord, D chord. Oh, pa, pa, um, pa. Uh, there's no slotting in to do here, there's no dotted notes, very straightforward. So we have. Now, exactly the same timing on the next two bars, but you're pushing in. And we have G, G, D. So for me, my seventh button down is G, it might be your sixth button, don't forget. So it's uh, G, two of those, and then the button above gives me D. So those two staves are a matching pair. Bars five and six, bars seven and eight. I always say it's a good idea to learn a few bars and then glue those together. Well, we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars. Now will be a very good time to go back to the beginning and practice those eight bars before you move on. I'll just play them for you and I'll count you in if you want to practice along with me now. One, two, three. straightforward so far. Now on the next day this is bar 9 and bar 10 you can see the chord above the two bars is C both times. I'm sure you know by now that the C bass and C chord are down here on the inside row it's the bottom two buttons buttons uh, 4 and 3 for the bass note and the chord and you probably also know that the C chord works in both directions it's C on the pull and the push. Right, we're going to start playing it on the pull, but we're going to do a little push at the beginning of the 10th uh, bar. I'll show you how that works. Now, it's not that difficult, but it's a little bit off-putting, I suppose, when it get that change of direction. Let's deal with the right hand first of all. We have E, E, both on the pull. This is all on the G row. A little bit later on, we will change row to the D row, but right, that's not until the very end. So everything's on the G row to start with. So you have E minim, E crotchet, at finger two. So the timing is one, two, three, and then you're gonna to go to the button below that and push. That gives you a G note. And then you play the same button and pull out. That gives you F sharp. 
and you come back to where you started on the pull for the E. So the right hand is one, two, three. Notice we have a dagger underneath the F sharp note because you can play that just by changing the bellows direction. You don't have to repress the button. I often say this, it's a matter of preferences. If you like the sound of the bellows playing the note, then stick with me in the way I'm doing it. If you don't like it, by all means, repress the button and ignore that dagger symbol. So that gives you... So what are we doing with our left hand here? Well, for bar nine, you're doing the classic umpa part on the C bass and the C chord, and that's on the pull. On the next bar, you're pushing to get the same effect for the um and the pa, but the final pa, it's pulled again. So in terms of pushing and pulling, you've got pull, 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 push, push, pull, okay? And then you've got the job of putting that with the right hand. Like that. So a little bit tricky, but good fun to practice. Okay, some good news now. Bar 11 and bar 12, same as the first two bars. And in fact, the previous two bars lead us into that very nicely. So far we haven't moved our right hand position. It's been on those four buttons. For me, buttons four, five, six, seven. For you, it might be three, four, five, six. So like I said, bars 11 and 12, same as one and two. Now we're moving to the second page and a bit more good news for you. The last four bars that you played are now played again at the top of page two. All right, that's probably a good place to get up to if you want to kind of glue that little bit together. So we'll play it up to there from the beginning and I'll count you in. Don't forget to bring your bellows out a fair way because you've got an awful lot of notes on the push there. One, two, three. starting to sound quite nice, isn't it? It takes a bit of practice. Even a simple tune like this will take you know, a fair amount of time, depending on how long you've been playing. All right, we're gonna go on to bar 17 now. This is a third stave of second page. Now, for the first time, we've moved out of our nice uh, position we started in, and we're, we're traveling to the squeaky end, as we call it, uh, the end nearest the, uh, the floor, nearest the knee end, a lot of people call this, okay? and it's second finger. For me, it's the third button from the end. If I press that button and pull out, that's the note A. Like I often say, just to remind you, it might be the button above that for you, okay? So it's an A note, it's a minim, and then a crotchet. One, two, three, and then we're going to use the button below that. Obviously, if it's below, it's higher pitch. It's a bit confusing. As you get nearer the floor, of course, the notes go up in pitch. So the next button gives me a, a high C there. Um, and that's third finger still pulling. And I'm still pulling as I come down the notes. In fact, bar 18 there is the classic dotty crotchet, quaver crotchet that we dealt with before. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Fingers three, two, and one. All next door neighbour notes, very simple. And the whole stave is on the pull. And the left hand, very simple. It's the D bass and the D chord at the knee end. Now, you're going to play the same button you just played. I'm going to press that button again. We're going to push. Backing chord is G, so same buttons. 
Uh, like I say, you push it, it's a dotted minimum held for three beats, that's the only note in that bar. And then you play the button below that, which gives you a B note, which again is a dotted minimum, so held for three beats. So those two bars, bars uh, 19 and 20. So let's play bars 17, 18, 19 and 20 after three. One, two, three. So in bar 20, we played that note of B and we used our second finger. Now we're going to change our position completely, bring our little finger to the button above that because we're going to descend from that. And we're going downwards through a G major chord, split up into its component parts. We've got a G, a D and a B. Fingers four, three, two. Always we're looking to set our position up so that we've got a finger that can deal with all the notes we need. So little finger, third finger, second finger, and it's the um pa pa on the G chord. Very straightforward. Everything in the right hand is something uh, in the left hand to go with it. No interlocking or slotting to do here. So once we play bar number 21, come back to the D, this is bar number 22, and then you come to the button above that, this time you pull momentarily to get the C, and then you go for the first time to the D row, notice that the head of the note has a diamond shape, that's how I let you know that it's not on the normal row for that key, so the normal row is G row, this is on the D row, so it has a diamond head, and it's the note A. The other thing to notice there, the D chord above the bar has got an asterisk by it. This is something peculiar to my music. If I want you to play the D uh, bass at the chin end, that's these two here, okay, then I put an asterisk by it, and that kind of warns you that the Ds are at that end. So this is how it sounds. Now when you play this bar, when you do your first par, your first chord, keep it fairly short, because you've got to come off the bass uh, while you play that C note on the pull. See? At the very end now, we have a G note on the right hand. And with the left hand, we're going to go um, pa, pa for the first bar, for bar 23. Now you notice the G is held for the three beats of the dotted minimum, and it's also tied to another G in the next bar. When you have a tied note, you don't play the second note, you just add the value of it to the first. So that will give you a four beat note. One, two, three, and then beat one of the next bar. Now, I'm asking you to stop playing there because the last two beats of that last bar, you're going to need to pull the bellows out to restart. You'll never be able to play the, the beginning part again unless you give yourself time to open those bellows. You may remember uh, earlier on in the lesson how those bellows have got to come out for that um, long section on the push at the beginning of the tune. So let's play those last four bars of the tune. <laughs> pull out and restart. So there we are. Uh, this tune was written by a chap called Franz Gruber back in 1818, a long, long while ago, uh, virtually 200 years ago at the time of doing this video for you. It was written in Austria. I think the legend, which I think is largely apocryphal, is that the bellows on the organ of the church had been uh, chewed through by the church mice so the organ wasn't working for the Christmas Eve service. And so um, this guy, Franz Gruber, was asked to uh, come up with this tune. And I think he composed it on the guitar and played it on the guitar for that church service, there being no organ. I'm not sure if that's a true story, but I hope it is, because it's a, it's a really good story, isn't it? Anyway, Silent Night, probably the most famous and popular Christmas carol of all time. And um, it's a good one to play on the melodeon. Uh, this is pretty much an easy version 
I have another version of this uh, for sale on my website if you're interested, where we play lots of lovely harmonies to the, the main tune as well. So check that out if you're interested. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and a Merry Christmas to you.